combatants because they're they're essentially mercenaries. It's arguable under uh, under international law definitions. And Prince said absolutely not because the people that were fighting in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan are barbarians who crawled out of the sewer. Um, and he said that uh, they have a 1200 A.D. mentality uh, and that they they don't know where Geneva is, let alone that there was a, a convention there. It's interesting that he misuses the term convention there because it wasn't a convention in the sense of a meeting, but a convention in the sense of an international uh, agreement that was broken that governs now international affairs. So here is Eric Prince uh, expressing uh, a disdain over the debate about the status of his forces in the Geneva Conventions. So, so let's go to that clip. Listen carefully. Uh, this is Eric Prince speaking in January, never before been broadcast. They are there to kill us. They don't understand. People, you know, people ask me that all the time. Aren't you concerned you folks are the Geneva Convention? People dealing in the likes of Iraq or Afghanistan. That was Eric Prince. Uh, again, it was difficult to understand. You can go to our website at democracynow.org for a transcript. It's up on the screen of what he's saying. Uh, we're going to go to another clip right now, Jeremy. This is uh, him talking about Yemen, about Saudi Arabia, about the Middle East, and specifically about the uh, influence he thinks of Iran. Yeah, he, as he put it, as, as Eric Prince put it, as I said, you know, Iran is at the dead center of badness in the world. And he painted this picture where um, Iran is fomenting a Shiite revolt in the region. And he talked about how they're stirring up this revolt in Yemen and doing cross-border uh, raids into Saudi Arabia. Uh, and he talked about uh, the Iranian influence in Somalia and, and other countries, um, and, and, and talked about the Iranians providing support for improvised explosive devices in Iraq. And he said that, that in the case of Yemen and Saudi Arabia and Somalia, that the Iranians have had a very sinister hand in these places. So Eric Prince proposed that the U.S. send in uh, forces, small forces, of, uh, of U.S. mercenaries mercenaries, uh, because he said that you're not going to solve the problem by putting a lot of uniformed soldiers in these countries. It's way too politically sensitive, he said. The private sector can operate there with a very, very, very small, very light footprint. Again, let's go to that tape. This is Eric Prince. Again, that was Eric Prince speaking in January. Difficult to hear. Uh, Jeremy, your article really goes through all of what he says uh, throughout this speech. Talk about—well, um, go ahead. And interestingly, he's, he's speaking at the University of Michigan, where President Obama just gave the commencement address yesterday. Right. And where he's going to be speaking on Wednesday in Holland, Michigan, is at the DeVos Fieldhouse, which is owned by the DeVos family, the owners of the Orlando Magic basketball team, the biggest bankrollers of the rise of the radical religious right. His sister, Betsy, is married to Dick DeVos. The heir to that fortune. And it's interesting, because he almost always speaks at some kind of a venue there that's controlled by either his family or his extended family. The, the last part of what Prince said in that clip, though, is very significant. He talked about the issue of the very small footprint. And that's been his line for a long time, that the U.S. government has very expensive military operations, and that if you take a high-end team of special forces operators, like those that work for Blackwater, former SEALs, Delta Force, JSOC guys, Joint Special Operations Command guys, um, that you can send in less of them and that they can, they can inflict much more damage. So he's suggesting that this this would be uh, something that could be done right now, send them into these countries to, uh, to take out the bad guys, as he called it. He constantly uses that term, the bad guys. 
And other things that, that Prince talks about, about training Afghan forces and also about Hurricane Katrina and Blackwater's presence there in the aftermath. Right. He said that Blackwater tra trains somewhere in the ballpark of 1,500 Afghans um, every six weeks. Um, and Blackwater is currently uh, uh, competing for uh, this massive training contract to train the, um, the Afghan police. And there are, there are some other companies do it, but Blackwater right now has a large part of the market cornered. And so they spend a lot of time with these um, Afghan uh, forces. But he also sort of spoke disparagingly. And in a way that, that sort of was cultural imperialism about uh, Afghans. You know, he said that the Afghans that come to us, you know, they've never been a part of something professional and something that works. And he said that that you know they don't they don't know how to use toilets. And the first thing we have to do is teach them intro to toilet use. Um, he also talks about women that are working with Blackwater. And he says, you know, they come to work in their burkas and then they then they put on their camis, their camouflage. And he said, you know, they really like the baton work and they get carried away with the handcuffs, wanting to handcuff men all the time. And and you know. He He's, he, he was he was sort of speaking disparagingly of them, and then at the same time turns around and says, "But in six weeks we turn these individuals into what U.S. generals have told me is the most effective fighting force in Afghanistan." You know, I, I wonder what General McChrystal thinks about that, given his Army Ranger history. That Afghans who spend six week with uh, six weeks with Eric Prince's force are somehow the most effective fighting force in Afghanistan. And then finally, Sharif, as, as you mentioned, he Eric Prince brags that Blackwater um, saved 128 people uh, during the aftermath of Hurricane. And Katrina. I was down there, and, and we were all down there, Amy, and, and we saw the Blackwater guys. We talked to some of them. Uh, they said that they were there to confront criminals and stop looters. But what Prince says that I think would be offensive to, to uh, well, Louisiana is he says that Blackwater forces beat the Louisiana National Guard uh, to the scene of the hurricane uh, zone. And he says, you know, we jumped, from, we, we jumped from five states over and beat the Louisiana National Guard. He doesn't mention that 35 to 40 percent of the Louisiana National Guard was deployed in Iraq along with massive amounts of equipment that could have been used in recovery operations, that could have been used in humanitarian operations there. So to say Blackwater beat the Louisiana National Guard, without mentioning that, it, that, that part of the reason there wasn't an effective Louisiana National Guard response was because so many of them were in um, Iraq and deployed abroad. And they expressed anger. I remember seeing some of them coming back into Louisiana, livid with President Bush, saying he cares more about Iraq than he does about Louisiana, and we should have been here. And, and, and so, you know, the, the, he, he uses that then to launch off Amy and say he participated, Prince as a SEAL, in the invasion, he called it, of Haiti in 1994. And then he said that he had wanted to create a humanitarian barge, like this massive vessel that could respond to natural disasters around the world, that could be um, uh, supported by large pharmaceutical companies and Archer Daniels Midland, but that because of political attacks from the left, because of his tens of millions of dollars in legal bills, he had to cancel it. And he says, you know, a ship like that sure could come in handy right now in Haiti as it deals with the earthquake. He also talked about the CIA bombing in Coast. He, yeah, he did, although he didn't mention the fact that the Blackwater was guarding the CIA individuals that were blown up that day. Remember, there was a Jordanian double agent that managed to penetrate forward operating base Chapman, and they killed eight. He killed eight CIA personnel, including two Blackwater operatives. Um, I, I have learned from a very well-informed intelligence source within the U.S. government that the Blackwater men were doing security that day. So, you know, in a way, you could say that Bla the Blackwater operatives failed to protect the CIA uh, individuals uh, that were that were there that day. But Prince talked about it being being a necessary cost of doing business. And that's when he segued into um, his disdain for the Geneva Convention, was when he started saying that pe the people that were fighting were barbarians that crawled out of the sewer. Um, but he doesn't mention that Blackwater had personnel killed there. Um, he also compares himself to Valerie Plame and says that he was a victim of outing and that, and that um, you know, the government depends on Americans who are not working officially with the government, but are contractors for the entire intelligence apparatus to function. And, and it was unprecedented for someone one like him running a sensitive program, which was essentially a CIA assassination program, to be outed publicly and, and compared himself to Valerie Plame.